Welcome to part two, Z-Sphere Rigging with the uh, Transpose Master. So the first thing before we dive into using Transpose Master, I'd like to take a look at each subtool's subdivision levels, how many they have, what the lowest level looks like. Because what Transpose Master is actually going to do is drop all subtools to its lowest subdivision level and then merge it and drop in a Z-Sphere so that I can use it for rigging. So you'll notice that the body has a different poly count than the hair or the swimsuit. So I want to make all these match up relatively to about the same amount as polygons. So if you look at the swimsuit, it's very, very dense. It has no subdivision levels. So I need to reconstruct this and get it closer to what the body is. So I'm using under tool, geometry, reconstruct subdiv to get lower subdiv. So now the swimsuit actually has subdivision levels and the poly count looks the same. So I'm actually going to do the same thing for the hair and drop one subdivision level down. So now her whole body, swimsuit, and hair have the same poly count. So now next is go to Z plug, go to Transpose Master, and click on the Z Sphere Rig button. Make sure to have this on so that a Z Sphere will be dropped, and then click the button above that, T Pose Mesh. And what ZBrush is doing is it's taking all subtools, merging them and drop them all to the lowest subdivision level and dropping a z-sphere in as a working subtool. So now I'm going to make sure to have symmetry mode on at all times so that when I do things like move my z-sphere I'm moving up and down an axis. I'm not moving to the left or to the right. I'm actually going to scale down the z-sphere and make it react the same as I did in part one. So if you're just watching part two before part one, I strongly recommend visiting part one rigging with a single sub tool um, because these steps that I'm about to do are the same exact things that I did for part one. So I know what the rig for her needs to relatively look like. So again, I'm by default, when you are applying a rigging, you will have transparency mode on. Just make sure not to have ghost transparency on. So every time I am in draw mode and I click on any point in the mesh, it'll just start drawing out Z spheres there. So you'll see me continuously move from move and rotate. Right now I'm just moving my Z spheres in place and making them work like an actual skeleton in and underneath her skin. So again, I also like to thank Caroline um, Deline for giving me this uh, character to work with. So if you see, we're going to move along now and continue up the body, which I'm now selecting that root Z-sphere, which is using the move button. And now I'm in draw mode, just clicking anywhere on the surface, and a Z-sphere will be drawn out. So this makes it very simple and, in fact, very easy to create a rig. For me now to create this rig for her, it takes me minutes, a couple minutes, I create the entire rig. So I'm building the rig based off the first videos, a uh, single sub tool. So we're going to start that with the base and be able to do testing. So now I'm drawing out into the neck and applying the same pretty much rig that I had in part one. Now the thing to remember is that we are having merged sub tools now. So we'll be editing that needs to be done in certain Z spheres maybe need to be moved and added in certain locations. But the first thing to do is lay down what I'm laying down and do some tests. So right now I'm adding the caps to where the hip joint will be and then I'm going to add some caps above the knee and below the knee and then I'm also going to do the same thing at the elbow. Above the elbow, below the elbow, same thing at the shoulder. Um, just this is a great z-sphere that I'm moving right now to help with shoulder shrugs and getting that really definitive movement within the shoulder uh, especially between your cap scapula and your clavicle so I know this model and in most cases any model that you're going to use z-rigging for you're going to probably want to add some kind of at least one rib if not two so right now I'm adding a rib in two locations, one by above the pelvic bone and one at the front of her chest so I can have more movement and more control. Keep in mind the more z-spheres I add, the more the binding becomes relative to the number of z-spheres. 
So every time I add a z-sphere, that becomes a calculation within the binding. So less of the geometry will move with a singular z-sphere if we have more z-spheres added. So I am understanding that, I'm starting to apply that knowledge and take that and apply it to, well, I'm going to need to make sure there's not stretching happening in the front. So we added a z-sphere there. I need to make sure there's no stretching um, in the back on robotics. So I know I need to add some z-spheres there. So now the way I've drawn them, they're overlapping. So all I have to do is switch to the move mode and make sure they don't overlap. And now I'm adding these z-spheres, which are going to be great points to also be used as a way to edit um, and really get into fine editing in the buttocks or along the ribs or along the chest or what I'm doing. So I'm going to do the same thing in the neck. I want to have more rotation within the neck. So I'm going to add a couple more z-spheres to have in the neck for rotation with the neck. So this is pretty much a base rig for her, this particular model. Now every model is going to be different. So the next thing I want to do is actually test it. So I'm going to go to rigging and I'm going to click on bind. So now the rig actually binded this mesh and because I'm using Transpose Master, it's going to start moving all these sub tools at once for me with this one rig. So I'm in rotate, selecting the chain. Again, the chain is what's in between each Z-sphere. As you notice, uh, when I raise the arms way above her head, I still get really great deformation, really great movement. So no matter what, there will always might be a little bit of touch up that will need to be done after a character is completely posed, but it's very minor and very minute. It's really more about muscle movement, about muscle tension, is what you start really updating. So I'm just doing some tests to see where I might want to add. And remember when you undo, the next time you click on the rig, it'll snap your character back into place. So these are all undos. It's making where you see your Z-sphere rigging move, but you're not seeing the actual character move. Don't worry about it. Just click on your Z-sphere rig and it'll snap back into place. So because we've introduced hair to her now, I'm testing to see if just having just neck joints is going to be enough. And as you can see, it's really not enough. The hair is really being stretched. So I'm going to take myself out of binding and I'm going to make some adjustments to my Z-spheres. So because the swimsuit was also introduced, I'm going to add some Z-spheres um, a little bit lower for the cap um, for the swimsuit. And then for the hair, I'm going to add some Z-spheres to give me definitive point movement so that I can move the hair and have better control over the hair and not be stretching like it did when I'm testing. So this is the beauty of Z-sphere rigging. I can rig something, test it moving around, bring it out of the binding mode, come back into where I'm in a draw mode, drawing out Z-spheres, and draw out some a new portion of the rig and then just easily rebind it. So it really creates a seamless process to be able to build, test, rebuild, test some more, change, adapt. So now let's take a look and see what I've changed. So I've added a little bit lower Z-sphere in the legs. So we're going to test that out and that's looking a lot better than what I had before. So I got better movement in there. So I'm pretty pleased with that movement that we're getting. So I'm going to undo, that'll be fine. And now let's look at the adjustments I've done for the hair. So we're going to do a shoulder shrug. And as you can see now, the hair doesn't move as much. It's just got a slight movement now to it because the, the Z-spheres that are inside the hair are now controlling more portion of your hair, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So now as I move my Z-spheres within the hair, as you notice, the hair itself begins moving. And this gives me even more control over my hair and how I want it to fall over the body when I start posing the character. Now, for the sake of time, um, she, she took me about, I'm going to put her in a finished swimming, like she's swimming underwater look. So it took me about 10 minutes to put her in this pose. So definitely make sure to have yourself some references. So I had a references over open on my uh, second monitor. So I'm going to turn symmetry mode off 
as well because if I have symmetry mode on it's going to move both arms up and obviously since we're creating a pose it's asymmetrical so I want to have my actual symmetry mode off so you'll notice I will start moving a lot from rotate to move I will start moving chains, I will start moving z-spheres themselves and getting specific rotations so I just use the z-sphere kind of to turn the arm more out and now I'm using the chain to move the arm and get it above the head. So the key point to this is when you're holding the chain it's the white triangle between the z-spheres when you're going to click on the red z-sphere and then that's what you're going to be moving and rotating and when you want to make some really minor nice tweaks in form you're going to want to rotate and change things a lot of times from the z-sphere so continuing on with the pose that I've been working with to try and make it look like she's swimming underwater we now are just going to refine and touch some things up so the benefit of me adding these little subtle z-spheres is really going to make a huge adjustment so I'm going to put myself in move mode and start playing with the actual individual z-spheres and get that body shape more deformed more accurately and more correct so that when I come out of this mode and I go back into my plugin which again is under z-plugs transpose master that when I click on the button for going from a T pose to a T sub T sub tools I'm gonna get a clean movement so here's my finished pose now we're gonna click on the button to send all the posed sub tools over to the multiple sub tools with sculptural information and multiple subdivision levels so it just used transpose master to do that I went from my T pose to my sub T button and everything has been applied to my sculpted model there's a little touch up here to the swimsuit but really not that much touch up needed to be done so there will be times depending on character to character you have minor touch up so as I finish just quickly touching up the swimsuit and then of course if you notice the finished image I added some details to the swimsuit and her hair but and all in all under 10 minutes I have a completely posed character looking like she's swimming in the pool so you can see here the details that I've added in the hair and on her swimsuit so again this is part two z-sphere rigging with transpose master and please don't forget about part one z-sphere rigging with a single subtool